Income Tax 2021-2022 Excel Worksheet. Create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number three. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we started putting together the income tax formula starting from a blank worksheet within Excel. If you missed those presentations, you might want to go back and take a look at them. The idea being that we're going to be putting together the income tax formula in somewhat of a more simplistic type of form, helping us to visualize the formula and also helping us possibly to kind of make a double check as we do data input into tax software. So we're gonna be continuing on here. So we have the outline of the formula. We have in essence, the income statement, the top half of it, income minus the adjustments to income or above the line deduction, schedule one deductions, you could call them. That gives us the AGI or adjusted gross income. And then we subtract the greater of the itemized or standard deductions, which we have some fancy formulas here to pick that stuff up with the if formulas and so on. And then we've got the qualified business income deduction, which would only be applicable in certain instances, possibly if, for example, having a Schedule C, that gives us our taxable income. And then we jump down to the bottom and we pick up the actual tax from the tax software because we're not gonna calculate the tax in the system but instead we're, we're going to rely on software to do that that's why it's going to be blue here because we're going to be showing blue items as the items that we're going to be populating in this form basically manually putting that number into the system and then we've got the credits minus the credits and other taxes that will be put in place that gives us the total tax and then we're going to be subtracting out the refundable credits and the payments now we want to add some more uh, information to it including the sub schedules and you'll recall that this outline, in essence, you could think of it as basically the first page of the 1040, although the 1040 is a little bit more expanded than that. And then all other schedules feed into some line item in general on the form 1040, the kind of summary page. That's in essence what we have here. So now let's just add some of the other items that we might expect in another tab that will then feed in to the first page so we can see how that will work. So the income line item, we already we already added, for example, uh, the income line item for the W-2, even though that was on the first page of the 1040, some of that stuff will be here, like the W-2 income. Uh, we put it on a separate tab on our formula because, because I think that it's easier to basically visualize. We also could have some other stuff that will feed in here, such as a Schedule B, for example. So if I went down to the Schedule B, this is interest and, uh, or, and ordinary dividends, and it would only be used if, if your interest and dividends were over a certain amount. But for example, that's another area that you can see adding into this income line item. So we might have multiple tabs, for example, that are going into the same line item. You could try to put some of those stuff on the same, on the same page right here and say it's all income items, or you might have another tab. It could be a little bit more clear to have more tabs so I'm gonna say, let's have another tab. I'm gonna double click on it. This is gonna be an income tab and I'm gonna call it interest and dividends or an S schedule B, schedule B tab. So we're gonna say that. Let's go ahead and format it. I'm gonna select the whole tab like we have seen in the past, right click and format it. Format all the cells, formatting the cells to currency. I'm gonna make the negative numbers bracketed, get rid of the dollar sign, get rid of the pennies, and then I'm gonna say okay, and then hold down control. I'm gonna scroll up a bit. And so there we have it. And I'm not gonna put a lot of detail in here at this point in time. I'm just gonna, just to get an idea of these sub tabs. And then when we get into these line items, as we go through the practice problems, we'll build up this Excel worksheet as we go. But in general, you're gonna have interest and they might be go coming from the 1099. So I'm gonna say interest. I'll say, I'm gonna select the whole thing again and make it bold. So we might have interest and then they could come from like 1099. So this would be bank, you know, 1099 interest. This one might be indented now. And then we could have a few stasis. So I wanna have, we could have multiple places that we're getting 1099 income. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of space and I'm gonna make this whole thing blue to indicate this is where my data input will be. So I'm gonna put my bucket here and if you don't have that blue, it's gonna be in the more colors and the standard here and then that blue right there, that's the one. 
That's the Excel is fun guy blue. And then font here, hit the drop down. We're gonna go down to the all borders. And so there we have it. So if we had interest of say, you know, $100, then I'm gonna total that up at the bottom. So we'll say total interest, total interest. And I'll sum it up on the outside with a trusty sum formula, sum of these items. And then I'm gonna add dividends here too because this form has, has dividends and interest typically. So you got dividends down here. So I'm gonna have another category, part B. I might even subcategorize it as part A and part B. So I might say this is interest or part A, part A or part one was it? Part one, part I, part one, right? Isn't that how they say it? Part one and part B. So then I'm gonna put dividends down here. Dividends part two, not B, two. We're doing Roman numerals, not letters, Roman numerals. So this could be bank, this would be a form 1099, whatever data input that we're imagining here. I'm gonna indent it. I'm gonna make this whole thing blue. We'll give it a few spaces down here to give it enough room. So that looks good. I'm gonna make it blue put brackets around it, and this will be the total, total div dividends. Put that on the outer column, equals the sum of these two. And dividends can be a little tricky because you might have like, div I'll put like $50 in here. You might have dividends that are that are you know taxed at different rates so we'll talk more about that later but just to give a general idea and then if i was to to take total interest and dividends equals the outer column here the outer column i'm going to sum up the outer column there it is and that number is what i want to pull into the line item the first line item on the 1040 going back to the 1040 so what I'm gonna do is double click on this 100, go to the end of it and say plus, go back to this tab and pick out that 150. So that's where we can see now we're at the 100 uh, and 150 in the income line item. And we can continue on with that with different income line items. You can see here that this schedule B feeds into the 1040 on line one or on page one into the, into the interest uh, and dividends that are gonna be on page one. So here we've got the dividends, dividends, we've got uh, different areas of div ordinary dividends versus qualified, we'll talk about those later, and the interest. And also you might not have Schedule B if it's below a certain threshold, we'll talk about that later, but you can see how that kind of feeds into page one. So there is that. So let's, let's move away from income. There's a lot of other things that will be fitting into the income line item. So, but that's the general idea. We'll just keep on adding tabs as we need them feed them into the income. Other tabs might be Schedule C, Schedule uh, D, you know, Schedule E, and so on. And then adjustments. So adjustments, we could go over here and say, okay, how does that work on the tax return? If I entered an adjustment, that would be typically on Schedule 1 and, the, and page 2, this would be adjustments to income, like educator expenses, certain business expenses of reservists, health insurance moving. So you might then say, okay, I'll just make another tab here that includes all this stuff or at least a lot of this a lot of this stuff in it in my worksheet so i'm going to say okay let's make another tab i'm going to say let's make another tab and i'm going to put this i'm going to drag it grab it and drag it grabbed it and dragged it get over here thing dragged it over there and then i'm going to double click on this and i'm going to copy that it's going to be adjustments to income adjustments to income schedule one so i'll double click on it call it schedule one adjustments to income so there it is and i this time i put the schedule first maybe i should be doing that all the time like schedule b before this part so maybe i should be saying schedule b cut and put that up front maybe is that better schedule b and then the income form 1040 income i'll leave that the way it is because it's the 1040 okay so i'm going to go back on over here i'm going to highlight the whole thing again select the whole thing or right click and let's just format this thing so i'm going to format the cells and i'm going to make it currency dollars brackets negative 
and get rid of the dollar sign, no pennies, because it's a tax return. I'm gonna increase the size, holding control, scrolling up to 190 for me. Select the whole thing, I'm gonna make it boldened. I'm gonna embolden it. The whole sheet has been emboldened. And then I could add basically all of these in place. I'm not gonna add them all right now. So if you wanna do this at one time, you could. I'll just add the IRA for now. That's one of the more common ones you're, you're gonna see. So let's just add an IRA. So we'll say IRA, I could name it up top. Let's say adjustments to income. It might not be in the same order. It, it won't be because I'm gonna just add the IRA here. IRA. Ira, I'm going to indent. Now you could have uh, multiple different different uh, components for the Ira because you could have the uh, married couple Ira for the husband and spouse. So you might want you know a couple spaces even within the Ira. So you might say Ira, and and then you might have a couple spaces down here for the Ira, and then you could have the total Ira possibly. So let's do that. Let's let's give it a let's give it a couple spaces. <clears throat> like one, two, three, four. I'll make that blue and bordered and I'll call this total IRA. That's not the IRS. What are you doing, IRS? IRA. 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 Not IRS. And then I'll say the totals on the outside. I'll put this in the outer column equals the sum of these items in the outer column. And so if I had an IRA of like $1,000, for example, there it is. And let's pick up just one more, just for another example, student loan interest. Okay, let's say, okay, student loan interest. Maybe I should skip a line. Student loan in interest. And, and you might even make these headers like black and white maybe. So maybe I'd make these black and white depends on your preference just to note that this is a, like a new section maybe black and white student loan interest and again you could have multiple people that have set, like student loans depending on you know husband wife you know that are in so that are coming on different forms so you could have a few of those actually so let's give it a little bit of space here and give it brackets and we'll make it then blue so there it is and say let's say we had one of these forms and let's say it was a big $200 student loan interest and so then that would give us the total not the title total student loan interest tap it out tab tab or one tab and then I'll sum it up summing it up and so there we have that and so this is just a rough draft. We'll keep on adding these as we go, but you'll, you can see kind of the pattern here that we have. And then we might have the total down below, which is gonna be the total adjustments to income. And then we'll sum up the outer column, summing up the outer column, the outer column, there it is. And then I can bring that over to the first page. So this first page, I, I'm not just gonna have a zero there. I'm gonna say this equals whatever I come up to in my sub schedule, which is right here, 1,200. That will match in essence what we do on the tax return when we populate when we populate items into the schedule A, and then it will feed into page one. So for example, if I went into the IRA here, say IRA, let's go into the IRA. Sorry, I got a hiccup. And then I'm going to say this is a thousand dollars and I'm going to bring that on over. Now schedule one is populated as you can see and we're on page two. So there it is and then it sums up down here and it pulls it over to page one. Back to page one. And so now it pulls it into to page one on that line item that's pulling from schedule one. That's kind of how it's built in a similar fashion as it is with our, our formula here. Let's go and simplify it back. Let's bring it back to our starting point. Let's let's get rid of the other income, no dividends. Let's get rid of the dividends. Let's get a, get rid of the interest and let's get rid of these items too. And I, I left a couple spaces up here on accident. I'm gonna delete a couple, couple uh, rows from one to three, highlighting from one to three, right click and delete those. Back to the first tab. 
Okay, so then we have the greater of the itemized or the standard deductions. So the itemized deductions are going to be on what we typically call a Schedule A. The standard deduction is going to be something that I'm going to draw from down here. So this is something I'm going to say is a blue item that I'm going to data input it right into the first page. So I'm going to make that blue. This one, however, is going to draw from a subschedule, which will be equivalent or similar to me recalculating a Schedule A. So it's called the Schedule A itemized deductions. So I'm going to say, okay, let's make that one. I'm going to make a new tab, pull it to the right, grab it, left click on it and drag it. Get over here. Go right there thing. Dragged it over. And then you could have just asked it, right? If you asked it nicely, you wouldn't have had to drag it. Like Anyway, I'm going to double click on it. This is going to be a Schedule A itemized deductions if I when I spell anything wrong because I will it's not an if thing then bear with me I'm an accountant I'm gonna I'm gonna select the whole worksheet and right click on it and format this thing let's format it currency put some brackets and some red on the negatives drop down none on the sign and take down the decimals let's make it the whole thing bolden and bolden the whole thing Hold down control, scroll up a bit, and this will be the Schedule A. Again, we'll get into more detail on the Schedule A because it's a pretty in-depth schedule, but you could go line by line and say, okay, I got the medical. The medical has some components to it that we'll have to talk about it. Taxes, we can add the different tax line items. So this one's gonna get a little bit more detailed. So let's just, but let's just add like a summary for now. Medical and dental expenses. I'm gonna say, all right, medical, we'll call this, a sched, schedule, schedule A itemized deductions. And then I'm going to say medical and dental. Medical and dental. Okay, and hit the, let's make this black and white. Maybe make these black and white. And then there's going to be some other kind of sub calculations we'll have in here. So I'll get into that later. There's like an AGI limitation possibly that you can see as they apply 7.5. And so we'll talk more about that later. It'll be a little bit more complex, but not right now because we're we're, that's not where we're at. Right now, I'm just going to say, let's make it all blue, put some brackets, and let's just, let's just imagine, let's just leave it at that for now. And then the next one, the next one's going to be taxes you pay. So taxes, So it's, and this will be total total I, I could put the total total medic me, total medical and dental and then taxes taxes you pay you pay is that how they called it is that what they called it taxes you paid past tense okay let's make that black and white black and white and this could this includes different kinds of taxes so you could have like state tax uh, local local tax property tax so we'll get into more of this in a future presentation but let's just add something here for now and we'll say let's say this is like 500 on this one i'll add a couple more lines just to give it some space brackets around it let's put some blue here and this is going to be total taxes you paid bringing that on out to the outside summing it up so there's one let's do another one i'm going to say okay what else have we got interest you paid let's stop it at that one for now interest you paid so i'm going to say interest interest you paid and so let's make that one black and white black and white We've got mortgage interest, mortgage interest, and there could be like multiple different different mortgage interests. So we might even want to get a little bit more detailed on that because you could have multiple different forms that from different banks, even if you have one home. So you might say, okay, maybe I need a different, a couple different line items here, maybe four, just to be, just in case I've got someone who has, you know, a few different ones here. And I'm going to say, and then if we if we start to populate this, let's start to populate this one at like at like six thousand, let's say. So they could have a six thousand and a second, let's say, of of uh, one thousand. 
So there we have that. And then I'm gonna then I'm gonna sum this up to the outside. Total uh, total mortgage total mortgage interest. And we'll bring that out to the outside equals the sum. Actually, now let's sum it up. Let's sum it up right here. I can sum that up right here. Equals the sum of these items. And then we could have other interest, right? Other interest. And we might apply that out. We might have some other interest that we would deal with. And that would give us then the total. Total interest you paid. Which I'm going to say now is going to be equal to the sum of these two not summing these up because i already got a total down here so there it is now this is just a basic format we'll go into more of this later but i'm going to go ahead and and say this is stop this for now this is going to be the total total itemized deductions now we get we'll get more detail into it as we start making making stuff but i'm going to sum this up for now outside just so we can see how this is getting built so we'll just sum this out and then when I go over to the first page, first page, let's make this a little smaller on the form 1040. This is not going to be hard coded as zero, but it's going to equal what is on my itemized deductions. So it equals in this case, that seven five. So there's the seven five. And, and in that case, I can kind of go through what happens on the tax return, tie it out to what we had as we recreate the schedule A and basically see, okay, does that make sense to me? Does it make sense? Can I build it myself in Excel? If I can, at least I'm more likely to get make, get some idea of what it's doing. So there it is. Now notice that due to our formula, the if then formulas, because this is lower than that, we're not gonna have itemized, we're gonna take the standard. If we were to increase something on the itemized, and this is usually gonna be like the mortgage interest, that's why, that's why you know most people that itemize are mostly more well off possibly not just having a home right now these days, but having an expensive home with a large mortgage on it, most likely living in a high cost of living area, right? So we're gonna say like, what if this was 15,000? Then we're gonna say, okay, then that's usually the kind of thing that'll push you over. And we'll talk more about that later, but now you're taking the itemized. So if you had like a home and, you're, and that would increase the property taxes that you'd be paying on a more expensive home in a high cost of living area, then that could significantly increase your itemized deductions and push you into an itemizing kind of capacity. So now you're itemizing instead of taking the standard. So there is that. So I'm gonna go back on over, go back to the simplified one. I'm just gonna delete this for now. Just get an idea of this. And so that's back down to zero. And you can see how you can go back into these every time you do a new tax return, clean it back out and then work it again so that you could basically reconstruct what is happening for whatever tax return you're working on. Now we're to the standard uh, deductions. The standard deduction we're pulling from down below. Now I might, wanna, I might wanna pull this worksheet up a little bit so I can see it. So I'm gonna put my cursor on 18 and drag down till I get to 27 and right click and delete. So I pull it up a bit, maybe, a, maybe a, like one more row. I'm gonna put my cursor on 18 and insert, so it's not right next to it maybe. Insert, so it's down a little bit. So there it is, it's down there. You could also put it maybe on this side, but I kind of like reconstructing when I have to do calculations over here, if there's anything I, I wanna uh, you know, recalculate based on this information. So I don't like having it on the left or on the right. That's right, that's on the right. So this is pulling in from the standard deduction which means it's not like you're it's not like you're hard coding it directly but you're pulling it in you're going to have to adjust that from this sheet by basically you know doing some data input not hard coding or typing in the number but you're doing activity that's why I'm going to make that blue and then we've got the this one we'll talk about later the qualified business income deduction possibly we would we would want another worksheet for that as well uh, but we'll get into that later that's going to give us our taxable income so that's our taxable income. This is obviously a formula. I'll keep it white because I'm not I'm not going to do anything to that formula. It should calculate properly if everything's set up right. And then this one, I'm not going to do anything to either. That's going to give us the tax before uh, credits. Now, this one is something that we would pull from the actual tax return. That's why it's blue. Now, next time we'll get into the bottom half, which is talking about the 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 credits and uh, the other taxes and so on. And we'll, we'll add a couple more schedules 
that will show you how we're, we're going to tie these out in a similar way to other to other schedules.